I've been building in public. Nice. We're matching today. Yes. <laughs> One continuum. <laughs> kind of, I feel like it's a wave or something. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Is it uh, particularly cold around you? It's not cold, but sometimes the mornings are like, I don't know, chilly-ish. Not really chilly. I don't know. It's just comfy with a sweatshirt on. Yeah. It definitely gets pretty hot. Yeah. I'm kind of freezing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> So I need to probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting so spoiled. I'm realizing <laughs> being here. Yeah. Just how do you so how do you time. imagine? Do you, do you imagine you're there kind of longer term, or how do you imagine sort of? Oh man, that's a if great. And when a return might happen. <laughs> I don't know. I just <laughs> extended this place till the end of May. So oh cool. I feel like since February, I've been like inching, mm-hmm. and it <laughs> month by month each time. Um. I don't know. It's super nice here. I feel like I've made a lot of friends on the, on the North Shore. I've been like surfing every day. It feels nice. nice. Um, good community. Mm-hmm. But I know in June it totally flattens out. So at least for the summer, like I'm thinking it makes sense to not be here. Mm-hmm. So it's meaning is dream. that North Shore? That's all of Hawaii flattens out? No, just the North Shore. So the South Shore is where more surfing is in the summer. Okay. And then, um, it starts back up in like August, I think, September, October. And then the winter is just like insane, crazy waves. Mm-hmm. Like pro surfers come here, <laughs> which right. I think I am fit for. But <laughs> yeah. Are you still doing the wave storm, wave stormer competitions? <laughs> yeah, I've been hanging out with people from that a lot, actually. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Kindred spirit. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It's just, like, yesterday, we, a bunch of us met up and just surfed, and there were a bunch of boards. Like, not only wave storms, but it's nice to surf with people you know, because usually I feel like I'm so on edge about, like, etiquette and the lineup and everything. Mm-hmm. But just being with people where it's, like, every wave is a party wave. Like, everyone goes... <laughs> <laughs> so fun. is that the the general vibe is people are kind of like party wave everything's cool or do people get if you're, if you're with friends, or... otherwise it's like very it feels very intense mm-hmm. <laughs> i think it can be a little bit too much it sometimes like takes the fun out of it because people are so i've never had bad experiences but everyone i've met has been like yelled out of the water at some point or like threatened or something i haven't right. happened yet <laughs> yeah but, yeah, did Brush that ever happen in the water? You know, not not too much. The you know any of the places that um, I've I've spent any time were mostly kind of quiet places. You know, not not super not super loud. Not you know, they're not super busy. <clears throat> um, and you know, fairly kind of overall, I'd say quiet yeah. culturally. They were not yeah not really aggressive but that's the cool. one the one time was, i was i think a few times i went out like on waikiki and somebody was yelling that at me for not funny. being a local and i was like what like is there anybody here who's a local in waikiki it's so, so yeah. ridiculous that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm watching this video right now wow i couldn't stop Ooh. laughing what? <laughs> Just absolute <laughs> chaos. Oh, and then this guy emerges. Oh, he got at least a few <laughs> seconds up. <laughs> this guy with like a, what do you have, like a sock on his head? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. The original one was this, which a friend sent me this video I just posted being like, was this you at the Wavestorm contest? And like, kind of, yes, I it was the Wavestorm contest. (laughs) Totally the vibe. Wow. (laughs) It looks like that, I feel like people would get like pretty beat up with all the boards (laughs) flying around. Wearing like costumes with foam swords. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) great yeah (laughs) i heard it crazy someone told me that in maui like he was at a spot um and some local came up to him and was really annoyed that uh so the local dropped in on him Mm. but my friend continued to go 
And that was like a big no-no because you're supposed to just like back off instantly. And he was so mad and like held such a grudge that like weeks later when he came back, this guy paddled out to him with pig's blood, dumped it in the water <laughs> to nice. like attract sharks. Wow. <laughs> back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be like a town council meeting about it. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wow. oh my god, okay. Definitely gonna try not Pig's to. Pig's blood is the move, off. is it? I didn't realize. <laughs> wow. That's how you handle your enemies out of here. Is that like is that like a well known move to antagonize somebody? <laughs> like so. pig's blood? <laughs> Kind of, it reminds me of that. Have you ever seen like The Godfather with the horse's head in the bed? It sounds like some really oh violent, yeah. you know, that classic cinema scene. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Pig's blood in the water. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, Hawaii. So, yeah, who knows? But <laughs> hopefully, they won't end up anything like that if I stay. <laughs> Cool. Um, what? Uh, let's see. We've we had a busy a busy morning going through. We've got actually. I think this. You know, speaking of building in public, we've got uh, new production push that should come out. I don't know if it's coming in the next day or two, depending if we run into problems. But um, the new kind of more compact UX that holds everything together nicely. I'm like really becoming accustomed to it. So I'm. Excited yeah. for that to get, yeah. get in front of us all here. And then, um, you know, the the highlights, uh, uh, you know, on platform, I think, are just going to be a, a real game changer for how, you know, both we use the service as well as how it enables other people. Um, I was going to share some feedback I got over the weekend uh, and I, I won't call out the person just in case he doesn't want to be mentioned. I don't know if he does or doesn't, but I'll, <laughs> I'll hold off naming the person. <laughs> um, but the some feedback. So <clears throat> the first thing I got was, sounds like some awesome conversations are happening on Highlighter. Curious if you have a favorite or three you might recommend. And Ken said, I'm most interested in insightful, practical startup hacks and wisdom. And kind of said, why do I ask? There's a lot to choose from, overwhelmingly so. And he showed like a picture of Discover with all of the oh, wow. video cards. And it's like, basically the question is like, where do I start? It's just yeah. like, there's wow. a lot here, but but I want to like get to the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it was almost like he was prompting me and I said, agreed, it's overwhelming to choose. It sounds like he'd prefer to get just the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him um, the Twitter handle, which is our best representation of, you know, just the highlights. Yeah. Uh, and he, he, so then he gave, he came back with a few kind of specific kind of ideas and, and concepts. And so those are the ones I wanted to set some context, but these are the real things I wanted to share. She said, went through 50 plus Twitter posts. Thanks, great place to start. And my personal use pattern in case it's useful. So number one, he said, company resources. So he linked, he said like resources and index of useful services that have been on the show. So he said, I signed up for Pesto. He hadn't heard about Pesto presumably. And so oh, he, showed, mm -hmm. he showed a link to Pesto and mentioned that he signed up from it, having seen it on Highlighter. Um, so, and then he said, I'm sure you've had other services and SaaS companies on that I and other companies would potentially find useful. So he's sort of, I think, asking for some sort of a curated picture of, you know, like, it's almost like if everything were tagged SaaS or startups or, you know, yeah. potentially interesting tools, if there were like a curated collection of that, I think he'd want to kind of just be able to flip through those quickly. Um, so that was one. And then two, just kind of the, the category of generally interesting. So he mentioned uh, Brian Tobel and he said, bookmarked in pocket somehow to remember to connect years down the road 
you know, later when he's sort of more in the life stage. Um, so he learned about Schoolhouse and finds it interesting and wants to kind of bookmark it. He's not actively trying to solve that problem today, but he wants mm-hmm. to keep it on his list of things he would. So again, kind of just like exposure to interesting people and stories and services, I'd say kind of you know, yeah. high level category, and then his desire to curate from there. Um, and then he mentioned Launch House, try to remember to get in touch and stop by next time I'm in LA. And then <clears throat> just mentioning lots of interesting tidbits. So it seems like there's some additional desire to curate, save, store stuff. Yeah. And then these, this was an additional wish list. So made it through probably 10 plus people and highlighter has presumably dozens or hundreds, as he says. I wish I could somehow skim through for relevance and good fit somehow. He said categories, tags, clips, or something else. And so this kind of touches on this topic that we've discussed here before. Well, I guess I don't know if we've discussed it here. I think we discussed it in private, but Mm -hmm. we can discuss it in public. Is once we have kind of on-platform highlights, you know, how, how soon do we, you know, we've talked about this idea of trying to structure kind of taggable clips and question being like, how soon do we try to do that versus like, will it be fine if it just organically, you know, people type things, they can get indexed, we could surface them in search, but do we structure it as a hashtag kind of early or do we just sort of let that happen over time? Or can we do something that doesn't necessarily even, require a hashtag but that otherwise picks up the keywords from a transcript or an annotation or something yeah yeah like are there ways that we could link like i mean a hashtag is such a um proactive action that it feels like you really have to kind of know you have to think oh it's going to get used in this way so i want to make sure it gets seen by all the people using it this way but of course like nobody's going to see it because nobody's using it that way so then why should yeah. anybody bother? So it's like this kind of chicken and egg problem. And it makes me wonder this kind of categories and tags idea. Should we enable something proactive or is there some way to kind of <clears throat> passively like, I mean, here, here's kind of, it's a little bizarre maybe, and it's never actually happened in a UX as far as I recall, but imagine there's like a, um, a highlight somebody creates on highlight or on platform highlight and they write an annotation like cool SAS tool, something like that, but they don't hashtag it SAS. They just say cool SAS tool. Like, can we figure out that SAS is an interesting enough topic across the system and has relation to other places where SAS tools are mentioned? And can we just like Mm. effectively kind of, you know, expand that, I mean, I'm not even sure what this looks like, but it's something like expand that word and just make that like a hot word. And like when you hover over SAS, you get like a list of 10 other pages that you might want to go to, or you learn that it's a hot word and you click that and you come to some like search results page where you see all the stuff. Yeah. That seems, it seems better to do it the organic way. Because the only benefit of having like hashtags is probably, yeah, like what's what's the difference between hashtag and search if you are on the consumer end, like searching for a topic? It's pretty similar. I guess one Mm -hmm. is like more of an easily accessible collection of things. Like you could save the link to the hashtag. I mean, you could save the link to that search result for that term, but you know what I mean? It's more like a library item type thing, it feels like, versus search but yeah i think it it just takes effort um on the creator side to think of hashtags and all of this when you're like you really just want to communicate what is already in the transcript or in your annotation so that should be enough right but but i'm it's like yeah that that organic thing feels right but then i'm kind of like a little bit stuck on on like which like do you do it on just a subset of words that look interesting or do you make like every word is 
kind of highlightable and searchable or kind of hoverable and searchable in the system? Is there some new, is there some new like UI UX annotation? Like, is, is there some way to explain this concept to people really easily? Cause it's, I mean, the closest thing we have is like a hyperlink on the web kind of mm -hmm. is, is this, it kind of says, the author of this thought this was important and is pointing you at this other resource. Mm -hmm. And I think we have something kind of more implicit than that on our own little web of highlighter content, which is like SAS was talked about here and SAS was talked about there. So it's almost like if we know there's good destinations, then we make the sources clickable or something. It's almost like the system just kind of figures that out that, oh, there's stuff, you know, there's, there's a trail behind this you might want to follow. Like we, you know, not just because it's a rare word, but because it's both a rare enough word that it may be interesting and there, and we know there's content behind it. Do you mean, like, what would be, would you type in like SaaS startups into search and then you're talking about what comes up in that? Or are you more talking about like, dealing with the links that were shared in a session when you search, like, do we surface those or not? I, I may be, I may be uh, talking about a third category of things, which is um, you're, let's say there's a great session with a, a somebody who's building a new SAS tool mm -hmm. and somebody makes a highlight of like a certain segment. And then their annotation is just uses like the unstructured preformed text. And they say that's phrase cool SAS tool. Mm -hmm. If, if that happens when somebody's looking at that highlight, whether in context of the room or within context of the highlight, but it seems like the term SAS may be somehow linked to other SAS content on Highlighter, if we know that that kind of content exists. But it wasn't, it wasn't um, explicitly linked as a hashtag I mean, a hashtag isn't even an explicit link, right? A hashtag is just kind of like, this concept may be interesting to other people, so gather around it. And like a link on the web is like, I want to reference this particular source that I think is relevant mm -hmm. to this word or phrase. That's like a very explicit connection. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an implicit connection about content that is rare enough to be interesting on this page and we know exists on other pages on Highlighter. Mm-hmm. So it's like an implicit hyperlinking system. Mm -hmm. So whenever, when would those, so one thing is like, how do we choose what to hyperlink and how, and then like, when do those show up to the, to anyone on the site? Like, is it every time you see the highlight, you see like related items or something as a side thing, or is it only in search? If you like explicitly choose to search for it, um, a term, do you get, these connections surfaced. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's sort of like what gets shown as linked and mm -hmm. then how do we show what's, you know, what else is relevant? Yeah. I think the, um, how do we show what else is relevant? I think we could at least start, you know, if, if we were to take this approach, I think we could at least start with like a very simple version of that, which is like, you know, some, you know, sorry, how, how do we show, which other documents are relevant or which other information is relevant, I think could like in its base case or simplest case be just like you click somewhere and you get search results for that thing. That's mm -hmm. like kind of a naive implementation, but let's say that that's, that's at least good enough to solve kind of from the beginning. So then the question is kind of like how and when do we, sur you know, how do we surface a word as important or relevant? And when do we, you know, yeah, kind of what's that whole selection process look like? And meaning, how does the selection of the thing occur? And then how does a UI kind of indicate that that is a, you know, is a candidate you might want to dive down? Yeah. And and I don't actually have like a specific proposal for this. <laughs> uh but I think it's like YouTube. When you finish watching a video, it says videos like this. 
so we could show and i don't know how they necessarily choose that is it on the basis it's probably a bunch of things but like the text and the creator and whatever other information they have yeah also like there's different paths on youtube that have been explored because like somebody entered this one they were given this as a candidate video and that worked and somebody entered this one they were given this as a candidate video and that worked like mm -hmm. and they can measure dwell and they can kind of say oh like this one references well to this and this one references well to that but i think those are typically using like you know signals around kind of attention spent probably more so than like language or information like specific language stuff i mean there's, there's some language in the title but i think there's just a lot more language and kind of transcripts and annotations mm -hmm. so i don't know i i guess i and i don't mean to to stop too hard on this point but because we had discussed hashtags the other day and my, my biggest concern with hashtags, I think, is that it's hard to bootstrap the usage of them until people know what value they get from them. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if part of the way you bootstrap that or maybe even obviate the need for it is by doing something like a, you know, like a um, an implicit linking structure, you know, based on quality of, of signals within a closed ecosystem. I don't know. We've never seen something like this. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure if it'd work or if it'd be like too messy or it might be hard to, to make it really good. But, but if we had if, such a system. Like by implicit linking, do you mean basically what like videos like this is? Cause that if I watch video A and it shows me video B when I'm done, like presumably if I watch video B, it would also show me video A. Like, is that the kind of thing you're thinking of or something else? I'm thinking um, there's a, a highlight that has the phrase cool SaaS tool and this, mm -hmm. the term SaaS is lit up and that may link me to another highlight that talks about SaaS either in the transcript or in the annotation or maybe even in the replies somewhere. So it's, I think the, I mean, in a sense, it's a video in the sense that a highlight is a video, but when I say video in a highlighter, I'm usually talking about kind of the the one hour format versus the two minute format. Yeah. I'm thinking about the interlinking of the two minute formats to each other, or even like a two minute format to some other link that was shared, a non-video link that was shared in a session somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. So it could be kind of any, any written right. information or any textual information on highlight, highlight or whether it was. That's interesting. You know. So it could be, yeah, like key phrase, highlighted or lit up or in a different color if you click on it maybe you get a modal that says like stuff related to this or whatever and it and it's like links to different highlights or urls or whatever mm -hmm. or it just starts auto playing or suggesting like if you play that one highlight it'll suggest that's a little tricky because i don't know if someone's playing it in a bundle or not right but yeah, I think I think doing things around um, like which video comes next should be like I think there's like you know there's challenge there, but I think the UX of such a thing is like Great. more yeah. straightforward. This is more like the, the alternative to a hashtag being like uh, an implicit hashtag in textual information. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm trying to even measure imagine where this would have shown up before, but I can't quite put my finger on one that's interesting i just like yeah i wonder how because there are certain phrases like bitcoin or SaaS or like politics or something but often we return to like general ideas that i don't know if there would be like a word for mm -hmm. so that part of the flexibility of hashtags is you can have like a 15 minute conversation and just hashtag it something that kind of like covers the whole thing mm -hmm. so how would you handle interlinking of stuff that's a little less like word to word relevant right yeah i mean i think when there are concepts like that i think the you know almost like you index the transcript and you index another transcript and you you can you know up. there's all kinds of like up. overlap or kind of, you know, important topic 
excuse me, you know, there, there's this concept of like inverse document frequency. So like how rare is that word and how frequently is it occurring despite it being, you know, unlikely to occur in a typical document. So the word the is like very common in every document. The word SAS doesn't show up in many documents. So if SAS shows up and it's kind of a rare yeah. word and it's showing up a lot in this document, then it's, um, you know, it's probably like an interesting way to understand what this document is about. Yeah. So you could just say like, if there's a few documents that all seem to have SAS as a, as a, you know, kind of a high scoring IDF word, then yeah. probably like those videos that generated those transcripts are probably pretty relevant to each other. I think, I think those, <clears throat> those ideas, I think will be, you know, will be something that we would use and seem like they would be, um, they, they seem like they'd be, uh, I mean, there's lots of hard work to get there, but I think the concepts will be relatively, you know, you know, understood. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, and they don't have to affect the UX in a sense, other than they choose maybe a different piece of content and then we can figure out, oh, that was a good piece of content we chose or that was not a good piece of content we chose. And we can kind of get signal yeah. on that over time, hopefully. But the um, the the other stuff around around you know stuff that touches the ux around how we explain interlinking that's you know implicit implicitly surfaced but explicitly displayed and navigable is i think the one that i'm i'm a little hung up on right now or at least i i kind of feel like there's something there but i don't know exactly what it is it's almost like yeah it could be something like apple's built-in dictionary or something I don't know how to summon that. I guess mm -hmm. if I like. How does that work? Like, if I ask, I think if you right-click on something and click "Look Up." Oh, I was going to try Siri. Okay, you mean on Mac? Yeah. Okay. So if I right-click on "Hilarious," "Look Up" now shows personalized suggestions. Okay. So I get. Then you get the dictionary entry. Mm-hmm. But instead of the dictionary entry, it would be kind of like the web trail, mm. like node nodes that connect to this concept, right? Maybe and and how just did, how did that's a right click and then look up? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I don't use this much. Do you use this interface a lot? I never use it. It just made me think of like. What you were saying made me think of this, but I never actually use this. But if like wave was highlighted or something, right? Why is that highlighted? And I hover over it, and it summons some modal like this. Maybe I don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that is kind of yeah. It's almost like it would summon the modal, you know, and. And then that would have kind of the search results or the other documents or other highlights that are potentially relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the web, it grew up because the web wouldn't have worked without it, without it like explicit. Like you need to kind of explicitly point to things because there just wasn't enough at the beginning of the growth of the web. Um, you know, in, in, in explicit is often better than implicit because, you know, it's just like a human thought it was worth calling attention to means other humans would think such a thing. And sometimes you don't get the same signal when you sort of automate things. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the closest one we have though, is that kind of like right click look up. So then I kind of feel like we want to have some some you know i don't know if it's underlined or you know some some way to show the text is you know special or has this behavior behind it yeah because i guess we could do a left click on a piece of text well, i guess that gets in the way of some things but anyway we don't have to design the whole feature right now but just <laughs> yeah that's cool just, though. i was bringing it back because um there was this comment about categories and tags and i think we can do stuff there and it could be it could be explicit but i worry that explicit 
will be tough to start with. So I think about, you know, implicit. I wonder how, like, depending on how we would surface this stuff, if it's sort of like collections, more like curatorial human stuff, we could always have different collections. Like we'll have highlights on the website and know when, which highlights are relevant to probably we can pull out like 10 themes super easily that cut across lots Mm -hmm. of different events and just make them into like collections. That might be kind of interesting. Actually, we've talked about event bundles, like, post picks for events but right. they could be a different role or kind of person who's more like the knowledge gatherer for a topic across hosts and across events mm-hmm. which we could just do ourselves in the beginning like we could easily make a co- collection about like day negative 50 of your start <laughs> like, right. here are all the highlights that talk about things you should be thinking about where would, would those live on highlighter as a collection unit or what what do you have in mind? Like a bundle? Is that yeah. kind of the bundle concept? So you can create like a collection of highlights that are all thematically relevant and almost like it just like a yeah. quick study guide or something. What you're saying, but it's more human and curated in the way that host picks is right. Maybe that's that would be an interesting way of starting and just doing it ourselves or maybe our hosts start doing it too. Like, I, I don't know, maybe there's like a NBA strength <laughs> training mm-hmm. top tips or something collection that pops up, but just mm-hmm. to see like how people use them and what people want. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> Um, so just, yeah, just a few more comments from the, the feedback. Let's see, there was, and he said he was hoping to find breakthrough learnings and insights of the form. We thought X, we tried Y, we were surprised to learn Z. So now we ABC. So that kind of almost like, it's like a very densely compacted version of, I think some of the stuff that does happen. Yeah. Um, but I, I was trying to trying to think like, is there anything we can do that can like that's not typically how we end up organically creating content. But I wonder, is there a like is there a summarization step that we could do when we interview people to get to get things expressed in that way? Yeah. And I, I'm not sure like I think about where that kind of thing has come up, like I think about like Blake's story, you know, it was kind of like he did, you know, the kind of Groupon mobile app thing. And, you know, that style of creating something was not really great. And then he took this like much more ambitious, much more challenging style. And that feels it both like it's more satisfying to him personally to work on something big and ambitious and also ends up rallying a lot of other people who are excited about, you know, the, the same kind of topic and scale of what they can accomplish. And so, you know, now everything he does is, you know, more on that scale. Like Mm -hmm. that's, I almost feel like that story is kind of told, but it happened over like, you know, the course of the conversation as opposed to like in a summary. And I wonder I don't know if it loses the magic if if we force him or we try to summarize it, but it sounds like this idea of like a really impactful like mm. you know this then that now the other that that kind of format would be that that might actually make a really nice highlight. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I so my my response when I I responded to this I was, I kind of said you know. I think I understand the type of content, but we often have open-ended conversations rather than scripted sessions. So I think the ideas work organically and aren't always as punchy as what you're suggesting. So I don't know if like we can change the style to make it more punchy or just like the nature of like these how stories. That Maybe that's you can clip it in a way that it sort of shows that. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, it seems like even like Blake's story could be told over the course of maybe four highlights that that have that more punchy style and nature to it. So it might have like curatorial creativity. Yeah. That gets that gets there. Yeah. Okay, and then the last piece of feedback he said could make an angelus SPV for each guest where listeners could invest five thousand dollars minimum or something. <laughs> Maybe yeah. something crypto tokenize it, blah blah blah. So yeah. <laughs> I told him, in fact, awesome. you know, maybe maybe not too far off from some of the organic behavior we are we are seeing. Yeah, totally. That's pretty cool. So, uh, oh, what awesome feedback! That's yeah, awesome. that was very uh, very well kind of considered and and thought through. So yeah, it was nice of him to provide. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's some highlighter building in public. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. What, uh, what's on your mind for this week? Are there certain conversations you're already looking forward to or still, still haven't, uh, haven't dug into everything yet? Definitely haven't dug into everything yet. Let's see who's coming up. So tomorrow is Dimitri. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that he, um, I was told that he's a triathlete and then he wanted to go on a bike ride and I kind of like <laughs> didn't, didn't really schedule that with him. <laughs> I haven't actually been on my bike in, I don't know, it's been like over a month, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's working on like a computer vision thing which, which looks pretty interesting. Oh, that's cool. And then, oh, we've got our our souffle discussion. Is I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's be pretty interesting. This week, that's Wednesday, which is just the hour before building in public. And then we've got oh, we've got Sar from CRV. Mm -hmm. Um, he's gonna come on noon, and then Wes. Or, well, we've got a hold for Wes. I don't know if she's coming then or another time. And then we've got, let's see. Oh, we've got Regent Craft, Billy, on Thursday. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, Nonia on, do you know Nonia from Renko? Yeah, I'm excited for that. I didn't go to her improv thing, but I wish I had. <laughs> so her okay. thing was great. I, I want to hear what, I mean, I just want to hear, like, you know, her background on it and what she's doing with it and, you know what what she has in mind and what she wants to do. But when I look at it, it 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 feels to me like I mean she's really good at, at kind of hosting and ringleading and getting getting the energy flowing in the room. And when I look at it, it's kind of like if you wanted to build Y Combinator for um you know comedians or Y Combinator for like uh like Saturday Night Live. Like what's the Saturday Night Live of the future? There but actually no, this exists. What is it oh, called? It there's something in New York that's like an improv workshop series or something that like is famous for spinning out the best comedians. I'm totally forgetting. What is it called? You, this is, you're not talking about Second City. No, I think it's something Brigade. Hold on. Brigade and Oh, improv. that does sound familiar. Comedy. Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's like sketch comi comedy. Oh, Amy Poehler came from there. Yeah. Right. So so now, so take that concept, because it seems like this has been around. Upright Citizens Brigade is like a well-established, well-understood, well-known kind of, you know, you know, feeder program, let's say, to other great, kind of creative, you know, performing works, right? Yeah. So the thing I'm talking about is like, can you, can you just find the hobbyist or the casual people who, I bet there are people out there who are like, oh, I'm not that funny. I'm not that creative, but like, I love hanging out with my friends and jamming and we just always have fun and do stuff like this, right? Like, I bet there's just people who have like great talent or skill for it, but they don't, they don't live in New York. They don't think about signing up for like a formal program. But they could, 
come on and gather with people who are kind of like-minded, similarly casual about it. Yeah. And I think some of these hobbyists would say like, oh, this is great. And people would say like, that person's really good at it. And then that could be kind of feeder into, you know, the Upright Citizens Brigade or, or others. Totally. So yeah. I, I guess my, I don't know what Nonya has in mind, but what I want to ask her about is like, could this could this actually be like a feeder for getting you know could maybe she even I don't know if she cares about this kind of stuff but like maybe she could be like you know the host to get all this comedy talent assembled and then eventually funneled into like the UCBs and the Saturday Night Lives of the world or other things but just like can you help take this untapped talent unrecognized hobbyist talent and help structure it and help it create its own kind of yeah. ecosystem to rise, to figure out like, you know, this, this whole set of kind of creative creator work that's under, under recognized and under invested in today. Mm -hmm. but yeah. That's, that's I have like, no idea about like what the pre funnel is for any of the performing arts discovery, like flows, basically, it seems probably really broken. I'm sure. I mean, now a lot of people are getting discovered through TikTok and stuff, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Not just, like, you need to know some expensive agent and, like, yep. go to the right warehouse for an audition or whatever. I, I have no idea what the process is. <laughs> but there's presumably a lot of stuff like this that could help uplift a lot of yeah. performers, like, performing arts talent, for sure. Yeah. I think they... And I think it's it's changing a lot with new you know new media platforms that let people get in front of audiences in different ways and so i think uh but the, the one thing that i think you know something like what we're building a highlighter can help with is it helps somebody who has a knack for the like i guess ring leading like nonia has mm -hmm. even though she doesn't see herself as a professional ring leader in that sense she can take yeah. her ring leading abilities get people together and actually help people's talent flourish and shine. And that might give it a little bit of a, you know, a stage or some visibility to get noticed by, by somebody who's a little bit more in the traditional system. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my idea. She, I don't know. If she might not, yeah, <laughs> she might not be into it, but I kind of want to like slightly mention it and see if she's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. If she's like, or maybe she's like, oh, I, already, I was already thinking of doing this. And plus, <laughs> here's the other 10 things I want to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe she's like, I'm busy. I have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Any of that is fine. <laughs> um, and then, oh, and then Mike Mettler. Did you see Mike? Um, so so Mettler's coming. He's working on that that tool oh. that's like kind of a. I, I was calling it sort of a. Um, what did I? I think I termed it something like a continuous GitHub. It's almost like Check continuous concept, subtle but major rework of the Git workflow. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be good. I actually know Mike pretty well. We've known each other for years. That's cool. Um, what is this thing called? I'm trying to find the name here. Um, or is it not? Is it super, super early? It's it's very early, but I think it has a name. But I forget. Let's see if he has a website for it. Oh, yeah, and new dot two and new dot to. To is like the new. Yeah. Conga. <laughs> yeah. Here's the link I shared. Oh, cool. <laughs> I love the XKCD comic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. How do we use it? No idea. Just memorize these shell commands.
But these kinds of things could be like really powerful new workflows and kind of primitives for how collaboration and software development works. Um, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to hear kind of what, you know, kind of what inspired this. And he had worked on a, a thing a while back in kind of payments, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, I mean, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. And I don't know, I think he's been a little bit kind of a little unplugged or he's looked at a bunch of different ideas, but hasn't really committed. I think he was looking at something in maybe an education broadly a little bit ago, but um, yeah, I'm curious to hear sort of the path he's taken and exploring and kind of finally kind of getting excited about this one, which, you know, sounds pretty new. I haven't heard of anything like this before. So it sounds like yeah. a new, interesting new concept. Um, yeah. So it'll be fun to talk to him and learn about, uh, learn about that. Yeah. That's really cool. And then we have, I think one more, what do we have on? Oh, and then we have Terrify or Terrify. Terrify. Um, and this was this was through Rami, I think. Yeah. Do you remember Rami Adib, who we had? Yeah. We got to. This is, I think, the mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Recover your ability to establish emotional connection. Hmm. So it's like a like a psychologist on the phone, I guess. Like online, or like a video or yeah. yeah, yeah. So that'll be cool. To is it that. Modern Health that's like the main company doing this in the U.S.? That's more enterprise for your workforce. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I have a good overview of all of what's going on in healthcare. Um, I mean, the image on their website is looks very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Building a future of mental health care delivery. Value-based care is accessible. So they sell to corporations, which then provide this as a service to employees. Is that right? Yeah, looks like it. It's yeah. not direct to the consumers through the corporations. All right. How did you hear about this one? Uh, I don't know. I've heard about them for a while. I feel like they've raised a couple of rounds and been in the news, but I never knew much about what they were exactly doing. Mm-hmm. I feel like I should be uh, screen sharing. I'm... Oh, yeah. Someone about us. So, Alison Watson, this name, Jinan Kamdar, I recognize. I'm not sure if I would have met him before. It sounds very familiar. Maybe I just recognized him from Twitter. Oh, he was a director of product management to Twitter. So, if we follow him on Twitter, I would get mm. Um. He looks like a familiar face. And Allison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, we should have like uh, somebody, maybe like somebody like, do you know Nikita Singaretti? Um, I've heard of her through you, I think. She does a lot of health stuff, right? Yeah, she does a lot. And she does a lot of writing on health. Um, I'll see if I can find her Twitter. She'd be a good follow. Here we go. Yeah. 
I feel like she has done some really good kind of overview writing on just lay of landscape in health. So it might be interesting to, you know, have her have her join us someday to talk talk about that. Yeah. She could maybe give us an overview of the health healthcare industry. That would be awesome. Also, um, I feel like on Twitter, she and what's his name? Nick. Is it Nick Hill? Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Person. Yeah, right. Is it Nick? Yeah. Hill? They're always like jamming about. Oh, yeah. Nick Hill Krishnan. Yeah. Digital health stuff. Mm hmm. <laughs> My brother is working on a, uh, a healthcare service um, and I was talking to him over the weekend and I feel like it's such a different world than kind of the software internet world that we live in. Like yeah. so much of the, you know, like the insurers and the providers and the direct to consumer models and who pays for what and how things get bundled. There's, there's sort of like, he was describing it like these lanes. There's these like very clear lanes and you kind of fit into these buckets and people already yeah. understand pretty well how to analyze the buckets and the problems in each and sort of the pitfalls. So um, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if that's the nature of the fact that people haven't, like we haven't yet found, you know, new lanes or like things, like does that prevent things from, kind of achieving the same early traction or breakout because they, you know, the existing systems that they work with are, you know, in a sense, you can't, you know, you can't build like an app and work around the taxi system the way that Uber and Lyft did. You mm -hmm. kind of are a little bit more, you yeah. figure out how to integrate into the system in, you know, maybe novel ways that, that help yeah. create better services and help people, you know, choose you and fits with everybody's incentives and the yeah. ecosystem of payers and providers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. should talk more kind of health startups, the founders and startups in the health space. Yeah. Have you heard of solve health? Mm -mm. This is one, I think, I think, it, I think it's one that maybe I know of from Bill Gurley tweeting about it a lot. So Bill Gurley at benchmark, I believe they made an investment in this company. And I know they they've looked at a ton and have like not made a move on any of them. And then I think they made a move on this a few years ago. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I I think you know I mean he obviously has you know great track record and good taste yeah. and good good networks of people helping think through where the real opportunities are. So I'm curious what what stands out about this kind of thing because I, I look at it and it it's not obvious to me how to like does this sort of provide a clever new entry point or route around stuff in an interesting way. Um, the other one, what's the one that, uh, uh, oh man, what's the something health, compass health or no, what's the one? Is there something, oh, carbon, carbon health. Have you heard of that? Oh, I've heard of that. I, I don't know where I've heard the name. That's one that I feel like comes up in conversation as, you know, one of the one of the ones to watch. I'm not sure. I think they build clinics. So let's see. I'm just popping through to see if I can get a, a read on what they are exactly. But I know they actually have like a clinical office you can walk into. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking at a It's interesting cuz I wonder like this there's a lot of funds have just like bio as a focus area like a16z as a16z bio mm -hmm. 
but some of it feels a lot more like almost like hard tech like you're funding intense scientific research right in hopes of a crazy breakthrough for some mm-hmm. kind of application and then like some of it is a lot more like gov tech almost like mm-hmm. working within the healthcare system with different providers and i don't know if how much or any of it is really much like software like have an idea build it see if people like it right versus those two kind of buckets right yeah i feel like it it'd be good to get sort of a overview i mean my i feel like my go to here would be to you know just get nikki to to come on and and share some of her her thinking on what all these categories are because yeah i i don't really have a I don't have a good lay of land, I'd say. Yeah. Who was also a guy I met actually around the reading stuff. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find, because he had worked on a reading service a long time ago. And now he's doing something in health. And I met him. I think I can find him if I poke around a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, Heinrich Berggren. I think he was doing. I mean, I mean, it was years ago when I met him and chatted. But um, he was doing something in kind of metabolic, you know, kind of diabetes and ketosis, as mentioned. Mm-hmm. But I think he was doing something in like a. A physical, I thought he was doing something with physical clinics, possibly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to, uh, have to get some people, some people oh, on Verta. to educate us on that. Oh, yeah, wonder, Berta, of course. Ray told us about that one. Right, yep, yep. Ray's, Ray's been involved with Verta from day one. Yeah. And I think he mentioned to Sami to come on at some point. Mm-hmm. We'll have to rekindle that at some point too because it'd be great to just get get Sami on and we can hear it directly from him. Totally. Yeah, he seems like he has a great personal story as well. I'd love to hear yeah. more about it. Great. All right. Well, I think we've got a busy week uh, with lots of guests and lots of even non-building in public sessions. <laughs> so <laughs> should we uh, wrap it a little earlier okay. today? And we will yep. uh, we'll pick up tomorrow with uh, with our uh, our first guest of the week. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Okay. See ya. All right. Well, see ya.